So uh, it's a chilly, chilly autumn day, but sunny. So I thought I would go out in our yard and talk about this really cool plant, this grass. This is a Bromus latiglumus, Bromus latiglumus, or the eared brome. And we'll talk in a minute why it's called that. Uh, so bromes are cool. They have a closed sheath. And we'll kind of look closer at what that is. Uh, but this one specifically, Bromus latiglumus, really took off. I seeded it in a little bit in my yard and it just, it loves it here. It grew well. Uh, and we'll talk in a minute about the habitat as well. Uh, but with this, Bromus latiglumus has these really, this is a short one. It can grow up to, you know, four and a half feet tall, you know, one, one and a half meters tall. Uh, it usually has these drooping, these drooping inflorescence, these drooping inflorescence. So it's just elegant, it's leafy compared to the other brooms. Um, it's, it has like eight to 15 plus leaves on one cone. So in the grass, the stem is called a cone. The stem is called a cone. <laughs> and, and so anyway, uh, we'll probably cut some of that. Uh, so anyway, so this is this is its second bloom. It's probably because I cleared some of this off and now it's trying to shoot up before winter comes. It's actually in flower right now, which is cool. So with, with grasses, they have this, this base called the bloom. They're these two bracked like structures that come together kind of like that, that hold the florets, the flowering parts. Um, and in bromes, uh, there's more than one floret in each in uh, each um, in each spikelet. So uh, so the glooms though, there's only one set of glooms in the spikelet. And the glooms, the first gloom underneath is going to only have one vein, one vein on it. Uh, and then the second is going to have three to sometimes five, but usually three uh, veins on it. As, so that's the first thing you're going to want to look at. Sometimes these glooms can be a little hairy. Uh, and then on the glooms, and we'll look closer here in a second, on the glooms we have, uh, we have these, we have two or more spikelets, or florets, two or more spikelets in the florets. No, two or more florets in the spikelets. In each one of these spikelets, we have two or more florets. In each one of these spikelets, we have two or more florets. Uh, so here on the bottom, we have the glooms. We have the glooms. Remember that first gloom has one nerve. The second gloom is going to have uh, two to three, or uh, three to five, usually three uh, nerves. Um, and then we have this lemma. This lemma, it's this lemma here. So think of it like a sepal almost on a flower. Think of it like a sepal. And then you have a petal like thing, uh, the palea. Think of it like a palea evolved pa uh, uh, petal. And that's in, that's hidden within uh, the, the lemma. And the lemma is going to have this on usually under five millimeters long, but over like two or three millimeters long. And that's the on right there, if you can see it. So these, uh, these spikelets, you know, they're gonna have, they're gonna have, I don't know, one, two, three, four, this one's got five florets in it. So each one of these spikelets has, you know, more than, more than one floret in it. Usually, I, I think it's like four to eight, maybe nine. I'll look it up and put it on, you know, below here, but, but it's gonna have uh, more spikelets. And anyway, yeah, so Bromus latiglumus, just a great plant, just a great plant. See here, this one's in flower as we speak, beautiful flowers. Grasses have gorgeous flowers. Grasses, but let's pull out here, take a look at these leaves. Okay, so I pulled this one out so we could take a look here. So uh, it usually has these flat, uh, shiny green leaves. Uh, it's got a hairy sheath. So again, on the column, the column is the grass's stem. The column, these, it's gonna have more than eight. Look how leafy this thing is. Can you, let's try to get, like, look how leafy this thing is. So here we have this closed sheath, and that's something that's indicative of, of um, the genus, the bromus, the bromes. Um, also like glycerian and a few other uh, uh, genre. But um, but the uh, the oracle here, oftentimes when it's, it, it it's why it's called eared brome, is you can see this, the stipule-like uh, oracle that just wraps around, horns out. Let's see if we can see some up here. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. It's hairy, the sheath is hairy here often. There's a there's a form, and I forget, maybe in Kana, uh, but there's a form that's just densely hairy and super heavily flowered and drooping, and I think that's called in Kana. Uh, but then you can see here, you can see the hair, especially underneath, like underneath the, it's kind of like this beard of hair underneath the leaf sheath here. And the leaf sheaths oftentimes, for the most part, cover up the nodes. So you know a grass has these knees or nodes. Um, so the node is here and the sheath is covering it. The sheath is covering it. So that's another thing that's indicative about this species. The sheaths are covering the nodes.
So in summary, Bromus Latiglumus, it has this clothed sheath, and a clothed sheath, I guess, I should, I should explain what that is, because uh, I mentioned it, I just didn't really explain what it was. So it's like uh, the sheath, this part, it, it fuses together instead of wrapping around. So picture like if you're wearing a hoodie, you know, it's a, um, it's a pullover hoodie for a clothes sheath and like a, uh, a cardigan where it kind of wraps around um, uh, for a open sheath. So think of something like a Phalaris or a reed canary grass, right, with that open sheath. Uh, and again, so it's gonna have more than, you know, uh, more leaves, oftentimes eight or more leaves. It's gonna have that, that collar of hair, especially underneath on the back of the sheath here. Uh, sometimes hairless, sometimes hairy on the on the sheath. You know, this has a little bit of pubescence. Has it got that drooping panicle, beautiful drooping panicle, one vein on the gloom. One vein on that first gloom. The first gloom has one vein, you know. Uh... So the uh, the habitat this grows in, I find it more often, especially here in Northwest Indiana and Chicago region, uh, within like on uh, riverbanks, uh, stream banks. Uh, but I also find it in open and somewhat shaded woodlands, uh, kind of alluvial, good alluvial soil. Uh, this, I think I got the seed from this uh, either on a riverbank or it was in a, a, a mesic woodland, a little bit more open mesic woodland. Um, and it grows mostly in north to northeastern United States. Uh, but otherwise, just a really cool brome, really cool brome.